In the bathroom, he washed the sleep from his blue eyes, which in the shaving mirror blinked at him from an oval face under fair hair, a cowlick sticking up from the crown. He finished dressing and went downstairs to the dining room, passing as he did the ground floor parlour that Dr. O'Reilly used as his surgery, which Barry knew an American doctor would have called his office. He hoped to be spending a lot of time here in the future. He paused to glimpse inside the by now familiar room. Don't stand there with both legs the same length, O'Reilly growled from the dining room opposite. Come on in and let Kinky feed us. Coming. Barry went into the dining room, blinking at the August sunlight streaming in through the bay windows. Morning, Barry. O'Reilly, wearing a collarless striped shirt and red braces to hold up his tweed trousers, sat at the head of a large mahogany table, a teacup held in one big hand. Morning, Fingal. Barry sat and poured himself a cup. Grand day. I could agree, said O'Reilly. If I didn't have a bit of a strong weakness. He yawned and massaged one temple, his bushy eyebrows moving closer as he spoke. Barry could see tiny veins in the whites of O'Reilly's brown eyes. The big man's craggy face, with its cauliflower ears and listing to port nose, broke into a grin. When I was in the Navy, it's what we used to call a self-inflicted injury. It was quite the tatatara yesterday. Barry laughed and wondered how many pints of Guinness his mentor had sunk the previous night. Ordinarily, drink would have as much effect on O'Reilly as a teaspoon of water on a forest fire. Barry still wasn't sure if the man's magnanimous offer, made in the middle of what had seemed to be the hoolie to end all hoolies, had been the Guinness talking or whether O'Reilly was serious. When he'd first woken, he'd thought he might have dreamed the whole thing. But now... He clearly remembered that he'd vowed before laying his head on the pillow to muster the courage this morning to ask O'Reilly if he had meant it. He knew he could let the hair sit, wait for O'Reilly to repeat the offer under more professional circumstances, but damn it all, this was important. Barry glanced down at the table, then back straight into O'Reilly's eyes. Fingal, he said, putting down his cup. What? You were serious, weren't you? About offering me a full-time assistantship for one year and then a partnership in your practice? O'Reilly's cup stopped halfway to his lips. His hairline moved lower and rumpled the skin of his forehead. Pallor appeared at the tip of his bent nose. Barry involuntarily turned one shoulder towards the big man, as a pistol duelist of old might have done in order to present his enemy with a smaller target. The pale nose was a sure sign that fires smouldering beneath O'Reilly's crust were about to break through the surface. Was I what? O'Reilly slammed his cup into his saucer. Was I what? Barry swallowed. I only meant... Holy thunder and mother of Jesus Christ almighty, I know what you meant. Why the hell would you think I wasn't serious? Well... Barry struggled desperately to find diplomatic words. You, that is, we, we'd had a fair bit to drink. O'Reilly pushed his chair away from the table, cocked his head to one side, stared at Barry, and began to laugh. Great, throaty rumbles. Barry looked expectantly into O'Reilly's face. His nose tip had returned to its usually florid state. The laugh lines at the corners of the big man's eyes had deepened. Yes, Dr. Barry Laverty, I was serious. Of course I was bloody well serious. I'd like you to stay. Thank you. Don't thank me. Thank yourself. I'd not have made you the offer if I didn't think you were fitting in here in Ballybuckle Bow, and if the customers hadn't taken a shine to you. Barry smiled. You just keep it up. You hear me? I do. O'Reilly stood and started to walk round the table until he stood over Barry. O'Reilly stretched out his right hand. If we were a couple of horse traders, we'd spit in our hands before we sealed the contract. But I think maybe a couple of GPs should forgo that in favour of a simple handshake. Barry rose and accepted O'Reilly's clasp, relieved to find it wasn't the man's usual knuckle-crushing version of a handshake. Thanks, Fingal, he said. Thanks a lot, and I will try to... I'm sure you will, said O'Reilly releasing Barry's hand.